Hey, what's up? Texas style smoked beef brisket, when made properly, is the best tasting smoked meat, but it's also very hard to get right. What if I told you you could have the same unctuous, succulent, lip coating experience at home, but without knowing what you're doing? Yes, it's possible, but you have to use a different cut of beef. Today, I'm gonna show you how to do it. To get started, I'm gonna be soaking one whole bag or about two pounds of hickory wood chips. Any type of hardwood chip would work fine though. Mesquite especially is very beef friendly. Try that sometime. Also, I don't think it's necessary to soak the chips overnight like a lot of people recommend. In my experience, that just slows down the time it takes the chips to create smoke. Next, I'm gonna grab a little stainless steel smoker box. I'll link to this one down below because I really like it, but any heavy duty frying pan would also work as well. Now, I'll head outside and get my smoker set up. By smoker, I mean Weber Spirit three burner gas grill. Not sponsored, but I'm a big fan. Now I'm gonna pop the lid and set up the far left burner to medium low heat. That's a little bit hotter that I'm gonna be smoking at because I wanna get the grill preheated and get the first round of chips roll and smoke pretty hard before I add the meat. As you can see, I've removed the left grill grate here and set my smoker box right on top of the thing that diffuses the heat over the burner. I found that putting the box right on top of the actual grate itself required me to use a much higher heat than I wanted to get the chips inside of it hot enough to smoke. Once I've got a few strong handfuls of soaked chips inside the box, I'll close up the grill and let it preheat and start to smoke for 20 minutes while I get my beef prepped up. Back inside, I'm gonna grab 10 pounds of cold American beef. Specifically, I'm using beef chuck roast or beef shoulder, it's also called. I chose chuck because it's one of the fattiest muscles on the cow and compared to the other fatty cuts like brisket or short rib, it's cheaper, it's more widely available, and somehow it's also the easiest to cook properly. It's like the pork butt of the cow and it's a very underrated, almost unknown cut for barbecue. To learn a little bit more about what it takes to make amazing beef barbecue, I went to the only place in St. Louis that I've had that makes really good Texas style brisket, salt and smoke. There, they source beef with the highest internal fat content, sometimes actually prime beef, and smoke it for like 15 to 16 hours over a Missouri post oak fire. The result is beef that's juicy, fatty, and unbelievably tender, but it doesn't fall apart. It's not shreddable. The main reason it's so hard to cook brisket properly is that the intramuscular fat of this muscle is widely variable between the two subgroups of muscle that it's made of. There's the leaner flat muscle and then the much fattier point muscle. Obviously, getting both of these parts cooked properly at the same time is gonna take some serious finesse. Most barbecue places don't even come close to getting it right, and it's super dry and tough. In contrast, Chuck Roast has a much more even distribution of fat, so that understandably makes it much easier to cook evenly without drying it out. Now, I'm gonna season up these chucks with an aggressive amount of salt, like several handfuls of salt. I made this recipe three times before filming it, and each time I upped the salt, and each time it somehow wasn't salty enough. Even when I cured it overnight and I thought it was a ton of salt, it wasn't. So to get this right on all four sides, I'm gonna add as much kosher salt as will stick to the meat. Once that's caked in salt, I'll do the same with cracked black pepper. This is a store-bought pre-ground medium grind black pepper. It would take like an hour to get this much pepper out of my home grinder, so I always buy it. I'll also mention that this combo of salt and pepper in Texas is known as the Dalmatian rub, and it's literally all you need to make delicious beef barbecue at home. I guess add in the ingredients of smoke and thyme and you're gonna be set up. Once both of these chuck roasts are very heavily salted and peppered, I'm gonna bring them outside and check on my smoker. It's been about 20 minutes and the first round of chips are up to a ripping smolder, so I'll load these meats onto the opposite side. No heat under these, by the way, just medium low heat under the smoker box. I'll top up the chips to give myself some more smoke time and then I'll lower the lid. From there, I'm gonna lower the burner temp under the wood chips to low and then for the next three to four hours, I'm gonna try and keep this smoker rolling at 250 to 275F. In total, I'm gonna be using six rounds of wood chips here. That's about one round every 30 to 45 minutes and I find that there's no need to dump out the old chips. They just turn to ashes and fall into the drip tray. Oh, and I'll also mention that if you let the chips burn for too long, there's a chance that they might might catch on fire and then significantly heat up your grill. That's not good for the meat or your safety, so stay frosty and make sure you're checking on this grill every half hour or so. After the first three rounds of chips have burned up, I'm gonna come back and flip these beefs over to make sure they're getting evenly smoked on both sides. As you can see, side two definitely needs some more smoke, so I'm gonna refill my smoker box, close up the grill, and keep on smoking for three more full rounds of chips. Around hour four, 
ish. I've got six rounds of chips under my belt and the beefs are looking really nicely smoked up. At this point, I'm gonna gauge how much cooking has been done to them. The ideal temp range here is like 145 to 150 F. These are just a few degrees over that, but that's not a problem. Now I'm gonna take these off the smoker so that I can get them crutched up. What's that? I'll tell you in a second. Once I get these back inside, you can really see how dark and barky they've become. The salt and pepper on the outside has been smoked into a nice thick crust and they look amazing but they're only halfway there. To finish these, I'm gonna wrap them with foil three times each to seal them up. This is a two-stage cooking process and the second half is called the Texas Crutch. It allows the beef to cook a lot more quickly and evenly. Large chunks of fatty beef go through a period of time when being cooked over low heat called the stall where the internal temperature doesn't go up for like hours at a time. Wrapping the meat's gonna trap any steam inside and that steam is gonna insulate the meat and cook it much faster. Plus, it keeps the meat from drying out. Once these beefs are wrapped up and laid out on the grill, I'm gonna lower the lid and then turn the heat down to low so that the smoker can roll at 225 for another three to four hours, this time without chips. While those cook, I'm gonna take a quick break to heat and eat a ready-to-go meal from the sponsor of this video, Factor. Factor makes meeting your nutritional goals really easy by delivering fresh, dietitian approved meals right to your door. That's great for me lately because I've been tracking my calories to try and at least be somewhat aware of the amount of food that I'm eating. Personally, after a long day of cooking, editing, and filming, making a dinner that meets my calorie goals and isn't pure garbage seems impossible. Luckily, in that situation, having a few factor meals on hand keeps me on track and not full of low quality Chinese food slash regret. Their registered dietitians and chefs work together to design meals that are made from scratch with premium whole foods ingredients, just like you would make yourself if you had more time. They have keto options, calorie smart, or even vegan. I'm eating the roasted red pepper and Parmesan chicken here with some gremolata e cauliflower on the side, and I'm being 100% sincere when I say that it tastes very good. It's exactly like something that I would make for myself. It's healthy and delicious. Oh, and look, all the nutritionals are on the label here so that I can put them into my calorie tracking app. So to give Factor a try, head to go.factor75.com slash Lagerstrom120 to get $120 off your order. Just use promo code Lagerstrom120 at checkout. Thank you, Factor. After about three and a half more hours of slow cooking this beef with the old Texas crutch, I'm gonna temp it up to see where it's at. At this point, it should be sitting around 205 to 210F. That's the zone where all the interior fat has rendered into a soft, luxurious meat jello. After a squeeze, this feels pretty soft, but not like it's a pile of mush, so I'm gonna call it and bring them inside. Now, I'll give these a quick unwrap to take a closer look to see how cooked this beef actually is. When I jump in there with a the fork, you can see that if I wanted to, I could easily shred this with almost no effort, but it's still holding itself together, barely. That's the sweet spot. One last step here to really gild this thing is to set this smoky bark on the outside. After three to four hours of steaming in this foil, it's really softened up that exterior. And while this would be delicious as is, it would be kind of mushy. And we really want to dry that out to make some nice crusty bark. While that cooks, I'm going to drain off any of the drippings in the foil packs here to use later on when I want to lube up the meat. After 30 minutes in the oven, I'm going to pull out this beef and check on the outside. As you can see, it's a lot firmer and drier now instead of being kind of mushy like it it would have been before. And when I check the side here, ooh baby, these are gonna be sick. The final step here is to tent these beefs with foil and let them rest fully for about 20 minutes. This last little bit of waiting is really gonna ensure supremely juicy beef. 20 minutes later, once these are fully rested, they're still super hot. That's ideal, but be careful. Now, I'm gonna set up a little carving station here and then grab my meat. Now, I'm gonna slice these really thick because I can. We cook this beef really nicely, so it's tender enough to eat it as thick as we'd like. Usually when meats aren't cooked properly, they're sliced thin to try and shorten those muscle fibers to convince you that it's more tender than it is. Look how fatty and juicy this meat is. And there's just a hint of a smoke ring there, which I'm kind of proud of getting on my little gas grill. Now, of course, you can just serve these slices as is, Texas barbecue style, or you can chop it up slightly and fit it on a sandwich. For that, I'll cube it into very rustico, very large chunks, scoot it into a bowl, and then drizzle on some of my beef fat and drippings that we saved from before. I'll give that a gentle tossing to make sure I don't over shred the meat. And I'll mention that part of the luxury here is that this meat is extremely tender, but still holds itself together just enough. That way you get the satisfaction of shredding it in your own mouth as opposed to with your hands. 
Now to serve this, I'll stack it up on a toasted potato roll. By the way, check out the video I posted last week on how to make these specific potato rolls. Then I'll add just a tiny bit of some thin tomatoey barbecue sauce, use whatever you like, then just enough of this creamy slaw to bring some crunch and acidity. By the way, the recipe for this slaw is in my barbecue side video, which is probably a good follow up to this one. And there we go. You guys, smoked beef chuck is probably just as time consuming as brisket, but it is so much easier to get right. It's just as good, in my opinion, too. It's succulent, it's luxurious, and it's mega beefy. I hope you try it soon. Let's eat this thing.